Africor Health CEO Hector Bremner's life and career have been marked by recognizing good ideas, getting things done, and bringing people together. He's experienced in both the public and private sector, having run a number of companies, worked in the BC government, and served on Vancouver City Council. Now, a year and a half ago, he was appointed CEO of Avricor Health, a Vancouver-based health innovation company that focuses on applying cutting-edge technologies to core health issues at the community pharmacy level. Headquartered in Vancouver and beginning in 2018, Avricor Health Incorporated focuses on screening technologies and pharmacy settings. Hector, welcome. So we know that rapid testing is going to be central to our ability to reopen the economy especially as we wait for full vaccine rollout to be achieved. Can you tell us about some of the innovations that you and the company are making on rapid testing and how these innovations improve on our current uh, testing capacity? Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, it's great to talk with your members. And I'll say, first off, that we know that rapid testing, while not for diagnosis, is critical to a virus outbreak containment program. Uh, and in the midst of this uh, pandemic. We know that deployment can be really challenging and uh, you've got a lot of real, real big players in all of this. You've got interagency issues, you've got different stakeholders. Of course, there's a lot of administration and, and other sort of professional concerns and considerations. But what really comes down to the brass tacks that everybody agrees with, that you need information quickly. And so our platform, HealthTab, which was already being deployed in pharmacies for endemic disease screening, uh, we recognized very quickly that our technology could serve a role, a critical role in the pandemic by making sure that real-time reporting of test results in the field were getting to those who needed it, including patients and healthcare teams and, of course, uh, agencies responsible. Uh, so we, while we're more focused on things like diabetes and health, uh, di heart disease, uh, our partners like Abbott Diagnostics and laboratories like Avrock Labs in California have worked with us to develop COVID screening programs, and we're rolling those out now, both here in Canada and internationally. When we refer to real-time testing, how fast are we talking about? is right when the test is conducted. So our system is designed uh, in two ways. Primarily, it usually, our, our, our main objective is to connect to an analyzer. So uh, you've heard of analyzers like the ID Now, for example, uh, purchased quite widely by the federal government. Um, we connected to that device. When that device reports a result, it can be that information can be communicated immediately. It comes direct from the analyzer. There is no administration other than the administration leading up to uh, taking that test. So you've collected that patient information or you have a, a patient ID number, uh, a few quick questions about that patient. The test is conducted. All that information is merged in the cloud and then sent out. And so uh, that is immediate. We you know, took a step back and we recognized that also um, lots of these rapid antigen tests don't have an analyzer per se that they use. So uh, we've just used our web portal uh, to be a place where the administration can occur, information is entered in there, and when it's saved, the test result at that time is saved, and now that is reported. So that means that uh, the patient will receive uh, their result. Uh, you've tracked it uh, either in your workplace or, or if it's uh, an agency led program you've you've tracked that in your internal systems uh, because a core uh, thing to point out here with health tab is that it connects to uh, other data management systems so it kind of acts like a middleware it takes that result from the field and it plugs right into your systems so between the actual testing taking place and you're getting the results it takes how long well the tests usually produce a result within 12 to 15 minutes so about that long 12 to 15 minutes now, one of the arguments that's made by some against rapid testing is its level of accuracy. Um, what would the level of accuracy be in a case like this? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of schools of thinking about it. If you talk to some folks, you know, they're, they um, uh, think that only the laboratory result um, uh, is ever worth producing. Uh, other jurisdictions, Europe, for example, uh, Australia uh, are good examples where they recognize that Rapid screening tests, uh, they're not as specific and they're not as accurate, uh, but they're great for screening. You, you just, for, uh, from a cost base uh, and a deployment uh, perspective, you're never going to do it all with a laboratory. You could never have enough laboratories to do all the PCR tests that you would need to do, plus let alone the dollars uh, cost to do it. So you're better off using the lower cost, 
spread wide, cast the net, screen people, and uh, take then those uh, identified positives and then drill down on that uh, with uh, lab testing. And that way it's a more effective utilization of resources. But there was a study done out here in British Columbia looking at seniors facilities, long-term care facilities. And they said that 50% of the deaths in our long-term care facilities could have been prevented with more rapid testing. And that's because you can catch people, even asymptomatic, you can see who is carrying, potentially carrying, or have maybe had uh, a contact and then drill down from there. But otherwise, you're just kind of fighting this blind. And I think that um, it's been clear that there are many um, uh, fantastic thought pieces written and published uh, over the last several weeks from epidemiologists, virologists, um, the Immunization Task Force and others that have said, let's rapid screen and then drill down and not just to solely be reliant only on, on PCR or waiting for someone to be uh, symptomatic. One of the obvious applications for rapid testing is in travel. Uh, we've heard talk about the EU and other jurisdictions bringing in vaccination passports for, for people to have. How would rapid testing either complement or possibly even replace that? You know, I, I view them not as competing. I think that they actually complement one another. And um, vaccination, obviously, uh, is rolling out now. And uh, hopefully, by the end of this year, most jurisdictions will have had uh, a majority of their population vaccinated. And, and I know Canada is working very hard on that. Uh, however, uh, in the interim, we're going to need to test during that time. Um, we're going to need to test going forward because there are going to be variants out there. And vaccines aren't 100% accurate or, or um, effective rather. Uh, they can, uh, you have the odd case here and there where people can be vaccinated and still be carriers. You wanna make sure that um, you are at least spot checking uh, certain areas on the go forward, but certainly as we reconnect the world in this uh, immediate reconstruction post COVID, we are gonna to wanna to test travelers to make sure that we're identifying potential new spreads. But let's all just remember for a second also that this pandemic was entirely predicted by epidemiologists and virologists after um, first outbreaks of SARS, MERS, other uh, episodes, um, which caused a lot of concern. We, we left the hand sanitizer stations out, but we never really built the infrastructure to test and rapidly report and rapidly respond to virus outbreaks. So there's a lot of that goes into that. We think testing uh, is critical to that. Real-time reporting with rapid testing is a fail-safe way to make sure that we are on top of these future outbreaks. Assuming that we see other viruses cropping up that are totally unrelated to COVID, is this technology and applicable in a case like that as well? A hundred percent, yes. And, and we absolutely will see future outbreaks. The reality is, is we have more humans on this planet than any time, uh, at any time before. Um, and while some say things are always, you know, getting worse, the, the truth is that more people are economically uh, participating and um, upwardly mobile, and they're out, they're traveling, they're moving around. And um, this creates, whenever you start mixing humans, you, you get viruses. And so, uh, you know, they don't have to be created in a lab somewhere there's been a lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of nonsense about this virus they are naturally occurring and we have to be ready to respond well the obvious application is for travel and uh, you indeed announced a partnership in february looking at travel and how you could facilitate people returning to the united states uh, to meet the standards for incoming travelers but rapid testing has applications in a wide variety of, of other cases as well can you give us a sense of how else it might be used domestically well, there's a, a variety of sensitive areas that you're going to want to test. So there's workplaces we know have been uh, places uh, of outbreaks, and obviously the cost of doing it uh, for a business, uh, having an outbreak of any kind uh, is, is very challenging with COVID. Uh, you don't want that to impact your operations. So screening uh, as a part of your operations, if you have a lot of people interacting with one another, is a, is a smart way to go forward. Um, things like daycares, seniors facilities is, an, is another major one. Um, but anywhere where you have um, uh, populations where you know you have a lot of humans interacting with each other on a day-to-day -day basis. These are areas where we're going to want to make sure that testing infrastructure is supported to make sure that we get on top of outbreaks fast and contain them fast. Um, you know these viruses thrive on getting out in. You hear about herd immunology. Well, we don't want it out in the herd. We want to make sure that we 
catch it quickly. And you can't catch it unless you're testing and you're getting that information in real time. But as we all know, and it happens in business, certainly happens in government, as you and I have uh, experienced, is that there are silos in interagency uh, breakdowns of communication. And sometimes um, it's a real uh, uh, effort to be able to share data from one party to another. Our objective is here, as we do in our day-to-day -day business with screening for diabetes and heart disease in a pharmacy, we want to make sure that all the parties involved uh, in that process know about a patient's need and can respond appropriately. Take that same thinking and apply it to a, a, an outbreak. Uh, it's kind of the same um, approach as saying, uh, everyone needs to know fast. Uh, better to have fast, open, and, uh, and clear communication and uh, know where that data is going to go and be able to respond appropriately. Now, it, I want to come back. Uh, my final question will deal with the issue of uh, the relationship with government. It, it's obvious that there's some areas where it makes sense for business to go ahead and do testing whether or not government is involved. An example of that might be a, a work camp in a remote area of, in, in the energy sector where you want to be very confident that everybody coming in uh, is free of any of any virus and that you don't get the outbreak taking place in a, a critical work facility. But in other instances, it requires that the government set standards. And uh, the obvious question is, well, what then? Uh, the restaurant sector would be a case in point. It uh, will boost public confidence if they know that, that staff are being tested on a regular basis in a restaurant. But will that stop governments from wanting to shut down restaurants as soon as they see that uh, that the virus is, is spreading. Can you, can you just tell us finally about the relationship between rapid testing and the need for leadership from government to set standards? Well, that's probably one of the most important questions. And, and you know, there's been some really fantastic investments at the federal level in rapid testing. But we've simultaneously seen uh, stories saying that these tests are collecting dust and then it begs the question is why is that? Well, of course, in Confederation, in our country, the way that it works, that the federal government kind of writes the check and sets certain standards and is responsible for more overall approvals. The delivery of healthcare and regional standards and approvals happens, falls on the provinces. So there needs to be, um, uh, quite frankly, a, a clear conversation between the provinces and the federal authorities and to have agreement on what's the strategy for rapid testing and what's the strategy for deploying on these things. Because health officers from province to province and, and attitudes have varied quite greatly. And I think the, 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 that has created a challenge where you've got tests being purchased, but tests not being used. I would close on this thought by saying that, however, that buying tests is not a strategy. So you've got to have a program with which that the healthcare teams don't have to create an ad hoc program and they have to invent the wheel every time. And what we're trying to do is say, look, it's already built, it's already here. Let's all just agree that this is sort of a standardized platform of doing it. These are the questions that you need to ask. This is the information that you need to collect regionally. You know, you can have, you can add and remove uh, fields quite easily, but let's agree that we want to test in the field. We want that data reported. Uh, and that, that data reported centrally is for, for study at the very least or research, but when a positive result comes up that it's flagged immediately and that there isn't a, a delay in the, in the chain of communication. But tests need to get out of the warehouse and get out into, the, into these critical areas. And we think our solution in a box is, if you want to think about it, uh, is a strategy to use the test more effectively because it's not just about conducting a test, it's about generating data and in actioning that data. Fascinating. Hector, thank you so much for being with us today. It was my pleasure, sir. Thank you so much.